Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on how to make a car in Autodesk Fusion 360. So this is episode 14 and I have a feeling this is about uh, the final few videos for this series before we end it and maybe we can do something else. A couple of quick updates before we head into this tutorial is that um, the first Patreon project is going to happen on the 15th of September. So that's the Friday, 15th of September, 2 p.m. UK time. Now I'm flexible. I can change the times um, if somebody new joins and they'd like to uh, contribute towards the time zone. Uh, but that's the time for now. And if you have any preferences, please let me know and we can change it. Okay, and in this Patreon session, what we want to do is we want to introduce ourselves uh, form the community and also kickstart the project for the F20 Tiger Shark. So the F20 Tiger Shark is something I did in a previous live video um, and I think people found it really interesting. So a few people have subscribed to the Patreon. I'm hoping they can join. I'm hoping you can join as well for as little as two pounds a month. Now the next live I'm hoping is going to be on the Monday and the Monday is the 18th of September. Um, and again, it's going to be the same same time. So 6 p.m. UK time is going to be the uh, live. And again, we're going to do the spinning wheel situation uh, like we did last time. I think that was a lot of fun. People had a really good time um, and I had a really good time exploring new opportunities as well. Uh, another quick thing is that you can now do a super thanks on this channel uh, by clicking the super thanks button and you can contribute any amount you like that will help support this channel in the long run. Thank you very much for your support and that being said, now let's get back into this tutorial series. So in the last video, we focused on building these back sections here as well as this. And what I'd like to do in this video is sort of close the car off. And what I mean by that is you can see there's quite a few open surfaces. Um, so we're yet to build this entire section here. So you um, and remembering we've already built the front section. So the next few videos are going to be about closing this and adding a few more details. So in this video, what I want to do is focus on this section here. So all the way down till there. Okay. And remember, we've already made this section here. So all we have to do is this section here. Okay. And this is going to be a similar, um, spline patch or loft tool sections. So there's not a lot of crazy stuff happening. It's just going to be a simple one like we've done before. And I encourage you to pause the video at this time, try it out yourself, come back and see how we did it. And if there's something different you tried, let me know. All right, so let's get started. So from the top view, I'm going to create a new sketch. Again, ensuring that 3D sketch is on. <clears throat> I'm going to create a fit point spline. So we're going to attach one there. And perhaps I can split this into three different sections. Um, so one is perhaps somewhere till there. Okay, because this is quite a con continuous uh, surface. So I don't see a reason why we should really separate it. So what, I, what we can do is we can probably build all the way till here till where the door is. And then on another surface from there till the windshield starts and then the entire wheel windshield itself. Okay, so Again, I'm just going to pick up the spline. Um, whoops, what happened there? Okay, and I'm going to attach it to that point there. I'm going to move forward and perhaps somewhere to there. Okay, and again, trying to follow my own advice, I'm going to try and make sure this point is in the correct 3D space before I start with creating its tangents. Okay, so that's looking good now. And what I want to do is I want to hover over that green, right click, activate tangent handle, press M on the keyboard, and we can pull this up now. Okay, if I wanted to, I can actually do something like this. And again, um, I guess because of the way I've made the surface here, we can see the tangent is sort of going in this direction rather than going up a little bit more. Um, and we can see how that might look. So if I were to increase this, it's going to look a bit strange. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let it go as it is normally because it's now tangential to the previous one. But really, if you wanted to add this detail, you should go back to the patch we made here or the loft that we made here and um, try and increase the tangent line there. 
Okay, so maybe I can even um, bring this up a little bit, just so it matches it a bit fresher. Okay, so another fit point spline, and I'm gonna go from there to there. Okay, fantastic. So I'm just gonna make sure, because I think I might have clicked the wrong direction. So one and two, there we go. It's always, if you think you clicked in the wrong place, but it looks right, uh, but you think you clicked in the wrong place, just undo and re-click. It's always safer to do that. Okay, and here we have absolutely no curvature because uh, it's pretty much a straight line. But now if I go to the back side, you can see, you know, that doesn't look very good. Um, and I think we made a similar, we missed a similar detail with this one here. So let me finish the spline here and then we can go back in time and edit this sketch because you can see, I think I forgot to add a tangent control here. Okay, not a problem. And this is why Fusion is amazing. We can always go back in time and edit whatever we need to. Okay, so I'm on my keyboard and I'm just gonna make that as horizontal as possible. Um, and same thing over here. Fantastic. Cool. So that looks good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the sketch. Uh, and before we create the new surface, I am going to edit our previous sketch. Okay, and we can tell that from the from the top view is completely fine. But from the back view, we can see there's definitely some things that we can add. So I think curvature adding here would make a slight difference. But I think it looked really nice. Okay, I'm not going to change that because I don't know how many um, how many other dimensions it might affect. Okay, so I'm going to finish the sketch and save it. And what we can do here is um, close this. I'm going to take the patch one, two, three, four. Fantastic. There we go. Easy. All right, that was easy. Good. Nothing wrong there. So there's four uh, four three D splines nothing too complex about it. Uh, so there was absolutely no reason why the patch wouldn't have worked in this case. Okay, so it did and that's perfect. That's exactly what we expected. Now another one I'm going to do is probably from here to here. Again, we're just following the same thing. So sketch from the top view, oriented in the right direction, fit point spline, we take one there. And probably I'm going to end it here. Okay, and now I can press M on the keyboard and bring this down. And we can create our tangents. Great. All right, and again, one from here to here. So one from here to here. Again, just remembering that when you are trying to snap to another surface um, in another plane, it won't snap right away. You have to rotate your model a little bit just so you can get you can access that snap point over there. OK, so just doing that now. OK, great. So this sketch is not complete. Now, one thing we'll notice is that if we try to use patch, it probably wouldn't work. And the reason is because this is a single spline that we've used in a previous sketch. Um, the workaround is that you find where that spline is in a previous sketch, copy it, bring it into the current sketch, and then break it using this line here. We've done it a couple of times in previous videos, so I'm hoping you know what I'm talking about. If not, let me know in the comments and we can fix it. Uh, but again, uh, there was another way I showed you, which was the lazy way, which is using loft. So I can sort of loft this surface with this surface and I can use that curve as the um, as a rail and therefore it will follow the curvature exactly. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And there we have it. So you can see that in cases like this, it's it will save a little bit of time. But I think I've also noticed that when we use this feature, there are times where it doesn't quite follow the exact curve. I think in this case, it's fine. But I have noticed in other areas that it doesn't always follow the exact thing we want it to. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm fine with it. But I think 
what I've learned is that when you want to make something a bit more detailed, try and use proper rails and proper surfaces, um, especially bringing back a previous spline and breaking it, I think really helps. Okay, so let's continue with mo moving to the front part. Let's go ahead and save this. And I can see that when I hover over body one for me, this surface comes back up because I, I hit the front section. And what I want to do is I want to use this to join our last spline. So I'm going to create another sketch on the top, fit point spline, and go f one from here to here. Okay, and obviously from the top it's perfect because it's just going from one point to another, but from here we need to add a bit of curvature. Okay, and you can see that ideally one of our surfaces should have ended there. Um, so ideally what we do is we'd create another surface which is just the black section there, but for the sake of time and simplicity what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assume that that is exactly where it ends and I'm just going to bring this tangent in. Okay, so if you have time, please try and actually um, make this properly. Um, but I'm, I'm going to settle for this because I think it still looks nice. Um, and I want to try and keep this tutorial short. So that's cool. I'm going to finish the sketch. And I can already see a potential problem that we might run into, uh, which is that these two surfaces are not the same surface. So this is one surface and this is another surface. And of course, we know that when we're trying to patch something together or loft something together, then if the surfaces are not the same, it's going to try and identify the two different surfaces as two different surfaces. But when we want to use uh, something as a guide rail, then we want to make sure it's as smooth as possible. So I'm going to show you an example here. So um, if we wanted to patch this, of course, again, we'd have to take that spline from a previous curve, copy it in and break it. Okay, but we want to use the loft and we want to use the loft by lofting these two together and then using this as our rail. But again, because this is not a single surface, it won't work. So let me just show you again. So a loft between here and here. And the rail is this one and this one. But again, you can see it's not actually going to let me do that because it's identifying these two as two separate bodies. So if you press escape and just stitch these two together and now try the loft again, it should work. So one profile, second profile. And then the rail is this one as well as that one. But again, because now it's a single surface, even though the spline might be slightly different, it's fine. But the spline is smooth and therefore it's allowing us to make this. Okay, and another rail I want to add is that one there. And there we have it and press OK. So there you go. Um, and for a little bit of fun, I guess what we can do is bring back. So I'm just going to save this first and I'm going to bring back all the bodies that are hidden. And this is just so we can enjoy uh, the aesthetic of what we've done so far. So show hide. And you can see uh, if I just hide the canvases, that looks really nice. That looks really nice. Now, for some reason, this one is still here. Um, 427, I guess we can remove that. But yeah, this is this is looking absolutely incredible. And what we can do actually is create mirror and select all these bodies. And the mirror plane is this one and not join. I'm just going to say new body, press OK. And you can see how cool this looks. So let's go into perspective mode to make it really look like what it's supposed to. So that's really nice. Um, and I guess the really the only thing that's left is now making this front section here, which I believe we did. I'm not sure if I mean, we, we might not have, but making this front section here, adding details to our headlights, adding details here, making the wheels, um, adding our headlights at the back. I think there's a bit of a problem here, which we can fix. Um, 
Yeah, so I think what I'd like to do in the next video is bring back the canvas. So let's bring back the canvas. And what we can do in the next video is focus on the headlights uh, as well as this and this. Okay, and maybe we won't go too detailed and we'll probably make just the structure of it. And in the video after that, we can then focus on adding details to all those things. And then perhaps in a few videos time, we can do the wheels. So this is really starting to come together, isn't it? Like you can look at this and you know this is in Mercedes S-Class. Absolutely stunning. Okay, well, uh, I'm just gonna undo the mirror because I still don't want to copy paste everything. Um, and once we add all our surfaces and details, then we can go ahead and mirror and really uh, make use of it. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Uh, please do like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out. Please do consider joining my Patreon. The first Patreon session is going to be on the 15th of September, which is on Friday, 2 p.m. UK time. Um, if not, you're more than welcome to leave a donation on PayPal or give me a super thanks on YouTube. And hopefully that will help me out and reach out to more people like yourself. And hopefully I can also do some service for them. All right. Thank you very much. Hope to see you very soon. Take care.